hey there, it's Hardcore Sustainable. And uh, this is the first year in a long time that I've been able to have a full crop of corn. But I came out this morning and I found this, which is, uh, if you haven't seen this before, it's called corn smut, also known as wheat lacoche. And it's a fungus that infects corn and it distorts it to make it look like this scary version of corn. It's almost like a devil, like a, you'd hate to see like a human being that was distorted this much. Um, but it's actually edible. And I'm gonna see how this tastes. It's maybe just a little bit too far gone. Um, usually you wanna get it before it has this much sort of dark black spots on it, um, cause that means it started to open up and release spores but we're gonna cook it up and see what it tastes like. Ideally, it tastes like a combination of corn and mushrooms, which is a great combination, but if you let it go a little bit too long, it can get bitter, and we're gonna find out how this tastes. Now, I don't have any sweet corn yet, but I figured, hey, I've got this, so why not take advantage of it? It's uh, otherwise would be a wasted ear of corn, uh, but it might end up being a good breakfast. I've always been frustrated growing corn that it that it gets ravaged by these raccoons because it's just such a great crop. It grows so well here, it's so easy to grow, and it's so diverse. And it just has so much potential here to be a staple grain for us. Uh, in a very small area, I think you can grow enough corn to feed you throughout the year. And it would be nice to be able to do that, but I just haven't been able to because of raccoons. So I plant um, popcorn, I plant sweet corn, and flower corn in here. So popcorn is a great snack. You can easily grow enough popcorn in a very small bed to feed you popcorn for the entire year, even if you eat it a lot. And then sweet corn, of course, is nice to have just fresh. You can also freeze it. Um, you can put it in salsa and can that. Uh, you can also can corn. I've done that before as well. And then the flower corn, uh, which you can just store dry. You can grind up either with a, a molinero, which is just like a, a mill that you grind wet corn, like soaked corn. And that's how I make tamales and tortillas. But you can also grind it up and then just use the cornmeal and anything, you know. It's so diverse and it's such a great uh, source of nutrients. And corn gets a bad rap, I think, in our culture and in our, in our country because it is used and over-processed and turned into corn syrup and is put in everything that we eat and it just makes people fat. But that's because it's been ruined <laughs> and it's been put in all of the food that we eat. But it, it's a great food source. It's a great source of, of nutrients. And so if we can grow it and it grows super easily without a lot of effort and without like lots of chemicals, why not do it? So this year I'm looking forward to hopefully having a full crop of corn. Sort of a balance between these ones, which are kind of small, and, uh, and the ones that are too big and black, because then they're a little too far gone. You can see in these ones here, they're just like these little enlarged kernels. They haven't blown up to this size yet. But they're also, you know, this is I think sweet corn, and they haven't gotten to the point of maturity to even be sweet yet. Before the, before the wheat la coche infects them. Hmm. This one, I don't know, seems a little far gone, but some of these other ones do too. Work.
Hmm. That one's pretty good. I feel like it would be better if it had some kind of sauce on it, something else to mix with the flavor. Slightly bitter, just slightly bitter. And I can taste the corn flavor. Hmm, that one was more bitter. Definitely, I would say trying to harvest them earlier than when they can get this black, they would taste better. Um, and I think it's a matter of going out there and sort of monitoring your corn. Usually I'm sort of like feeling the ears to see if they're full, but when they have corn smut, they're kind of like getting big way too early and they're puffing up um, and you can feel how soft the corn smut is under there. So this one I found because it actually just like busted the ear open. And by the time it's done that, it's probably a little bit too far gone. But this would be good to add to something else, I think. It's not the best just on its own. All right, well, hopefully I'll be giving you some updates on my corn situation and tell you whether the raccoons got to it or not a little bit later in the season. Um, but thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, share and give a thumbs up to the video. And uh, be good to each other and be good to yourself. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.